Hello everyone, Radlad here, and welcome back to yet another video. Today we are playing more Metroid Planets. But this time we're not doing Enigma like we did the last few times. We're playing Planet Zebeth. And, uh... Okay, let's see if I got the... I had to map my controls really weird to get this working. But anyway, I actually opened up a, a thing already. Because I actually tried doing this, but then my controls were super messed up. But I actually configured the controls. And these are probably the best controls I've ever configured. Because I figured out how to get the missiles to be hold only. So that I can just hold them and then shoot them. It's great. Look at this. Well, you definitely can't do that with select. But yeah, basically you just hold the missiles and you shoot. So it's like modern Metroid games. I just never changed that for some reason. To be fair, uh, selecting to use missiles was never an issue in uh, Metroid 1. Just because, like, yeah, you just select. It's easy. But in Super Metroid, it was a problem because you had to cycle through five options. Which I don't get why. Why wasn't the, the, the power bomb only cyclable when you're in morph ball form? Because you'd never need to use it otherwise. But yeah. God, it's weird. I, I was trying to aim down because I'm so used to how Enigma works, but yeah, so I'm just, this is the original Metroid 1, like the original map, but everything is randomized, and I'm not sure how long this is going to take. It might take like an hour or so, but as you can see, they actually got rid of that. That is like the only main change they made to the map is that you don't need Morph Ball for that anymore, since obviously we got missiles first. Because, you know, that's not supposed to happen. We're not supposed to get missile first, but yeah. So it's been a while since I've actually played, uh... Just classic Zebeth. Like, I think the last time I actually played Zebeth was for the Metroid Plants video a year ago, so it's interesting playing this again. And I want to do a randomized one of just, you know, like a normal Metroid run. Just want to play randomized, because, you know, it's a map I'm familiar with ish, and then, you know, just something fun to do. Because, I, because like, Metroid 1, I do not like, but Metroid Planets version of Metroid 1, I love, because it's such a fun thing. Because the game actually controls freaking well, so it's actually enjoyable to play through. It's like a. Like, you could not have these, like, smooth jumps like you could in Metroid 1. Not to mention, it's not as much annoyance. But yeah, the one good thing about this, us getting the uh, missiles early is that we can just kind of go right into here. In fact, I think the pacing is actually better that we got missiles now. But I'll see where our next upgrade's going to be. More missiles, yeah, I guess. So, we're not going to go for 100% completion, I will say. I jumped really weirdly up there. We're not going for 100%, though, I will say that much. We are only going to be going for, uh, just Mother Brain. And I'm going to try to get enough missiles and energy to survive Mother Brain. Because I don't want to risk going there too early and then just getting completely obliterated by her. Because we did not get enough energy or anything. And I'm pretty sure it's just, like, Torian, so... I'm actually not going to go the way. I remember that's Torian. Ah, we. Okay, we shall go over here. It's the orange land. Filled with these annoying guys. Wish we got long beam. We don't, we just got missiles, which, I mean, missiles aren't bad, but not, not the best either, admittedly. Can't go down there yet. It's a long upgrade path, but we will get a decent upgrade, hopefully, not just missiles again, because I don't really need any more missiles. I mean, we do always want more missiles, but you get, like, 70 missiles each from Ridley and Kraid, so no, we don't, missile expansions are actually not that useful, because... They're nothing compared to what Ridley and Kraid give you, which I never understood why they each give you like a fifty, like a ton of missile expansions. It's weird. And something that literally only this game does. It's the only game in the entire series that has like missiles given out by bosses directly. Which I guess is the make up that they don't give you like any power ups like this does, but it's always been a little weird to me, you know? It's, like, it's a weird quirk of Metroid 1. Because, like, a lot of the other weird quirks, like, oh, the long beam. I mean, that was in Zero Mission. It was retained for the remake. Just one of those little interesting things. But, uh, and head up here. Because I don't fully remember the map of Metroid 1. I vaguely remember just that everything looks the exact same. So, it's kind of hard to even remember. But, I mean, there's an upgrade over here. So, might as well go for it. But this, like, just makes Metroid 1 actually enjoyable to play. Since you can realistically dodge the enemies and doesn't have as much annoying bullshit. And the main positive is that it respawns you with, uh, you know, not 30 health. And just gives you your max power set, which is nice. <laughs> okay, then. 
Sure, I'll take screw attack this early in the game. That's definitely not overpowered in any way. Alright, well, I don't think we need to worry about enemies anymore. I think we're already past that point. It only took three seconds, and we're already at the point where enemies can't really do shit to us. Ah. This is why I like randomizers, because... Because screw attack is not necessary for anything, so it doesn't really abide by the rules of a randomizer where it's like, you kind of have to get the upgrades you need to progress. No, screw attack can just be anywhere. Because, like, you don't really need it to progress, you just kind of get it. It's fine. So I don't know how long this is going to take. I'm going to try to, like, kind of speed through it as quick as possible, but, I mean, you know, we'll have to see. Because, like, Metroid 1 has potential. It is the most open-ended game in the entire series by far, and it's not even really a contest. It is so freaking open-ended, but that's also kind of to its detriment. But this is so much better because we have a map for one. And two, it's like, you know, actually possible to play since the original was so bad. So this just makes Metroid 1 actually fun to play, and it lets you appreciate the level design a little bit more, even if it's, like, very not good. That's why Novus exists, because it's kind of like Metroid 1's philosophy, like design philosophy of being very open, but like in a map that doesn't suck ass. You know? It's interesting. Because yeah, as much Zebeth has some good things about it, for the most part, it's just really a lot of long tunnels that are pretty boring, and it doesn't help that they literally reuse layouts everywhere. But yeah, so... Because, yeah, Zebeth reuses layouts everywhere, so it makes everything feel exactly the same. Mainly because everything is exactly the same. Like, there are a couple of interesting rooms, like this one, I will say, that actually use the upgrades you need. But they're honestly few and far between. There's very few upgrades I feel like you. There's very few rooms I feel like you actually need that like an upgrade to get through it. It's mostly just because there's so many optional upgrades in Metroid One. Because a lot of the upgrades are just straight up not necessary. All right, nothing up there. All right, this is a bust. All right, we'll head down then. That'll give us more upgrades that we can actually utilize. Hopefully, bombs. Because bombs are really the only upgrade you need in Metroid One to go anywhere. Bombs open up most of the map. After you get bombs, you can basically go literally anywhere on the map, and there's very little stopping you. Ice Beam has a couple of areas, and high jump, I guess, but you can bypass that all with Morph Ball Jump, since, well, Planets does that. I'm not sure if the original Metroid actually did that, but yeah, we'll see. All right, let's head to North Air, I guess. I don't see why not. And we don't have Varia Suit or even an Energy Tank, for that matter, which is kind of an issue, but... I mean, hey, this game is not as hard as Metroid 1, just because Metroid 1 was artificially hard by being bad, so... Also, not to mention all the frame drops in Metroid 1. Metroid 1 had so many frame rate issues that make... That's like to see the worst part of the entire game, is the stupid frame rate. Like, it's so bad. Okay, I don't remember Norfair's layout is good. All I remember is that there's, like, a ridiculous number of upgrades here, so for a randomizer, Norfair is kind of huge, and we want to get here as soon as possible. Brinstar has all of its upgrades incredibly far apart from each other, whereas Norfair is chock full of them. Making Norfair kind of the ideal place to go. Alright. I don't know, the level design of Metroid 1 just feels so random. Like, Metroid 2 reuses a lot of room layouts, but it feels more concise and appropriate in that case. Whereas, I don't know, Metroid 1 just feels like they kind of just threw shit at a wall and, and like, tried to see what... Like, God, I can't speak. And tried to see what would stick, but then none of it did. There was just nothing that stuck. So they're just like, eh, fuck it. Let's go. Let's just say this is good and call it a day. I mean, Screw Attack makes going through Norfair a lot easier, since we can just jump and immediately kill everything. <laughs> if we need to kill an enemy, all we gotta do is jump. It's literally all we have to do. It's that easy. Yeah. So, interesting jumps. But yeah, like, I don't know, Metroid just kind of reuses all the layouts. Like, oh, hey, we can't go that way because we don't have Morph Balls. So it's like, okay, well, I guess we'll reset, then. I forgot the controls of the... There you go, we did it. So good. I mean, Metroid 1's just like, oh, yeah, let's have a bunch of random design elements and, like, call it a day. And, uh, if it isn't that great, well, uh, who cares? <laughs> Get good, I guess. Like, there are some cool aspects of Metroid 1's room design, but, like, for the most part, it's just, it feels like a lot of just random blocks placed everywhere. 
And then they'll reuse the same room design like 80 times. Okay, Ice Beam. Interesting. Very interesting, I'll say. Still have Morph Ball Bombs, which is kind of an issue. That's like the main thing we need to actually explore the map. Because as it stands, we're kind of limited to where we can go. Uh, uh, we can head back actually over there. Because we can freeze that Ripper and then head back up and get some more upgrades, so... Just not all hope is lost yet. If we get bombs, we can basically go anywhere we want. There's really That's really the only thing stopping us from doing anything is bombs. Because if you break it down, Metroid 1, it's really just bombs that prevent you that prevents you from going anywhere. Also, Long Beam would be nice. It'll probably just be missiles. Or an energy tank, I don't know. I, pr I greatly like an energy tank by now. I don't really need these missiles. Because again, missile tanks are kind of the worst thing to get here. Because they're useless. Because as soon as we kill Crater Ridley, one of them, uh, we'll immediately get every missile and whatever we would ever want. And since we can't aim down, we cannot, literally cannot break anything that's below us, just because, well, yeah, that's, that's just Metroid 1 for you. It's interesting how they did things back in the day, that's for sure. But now we can actually head to the top of this room, but first I'm going to head over here, because... Oh, hey, upgrade. Okay. Although we can't get it yet, because, you know, we don't have Morph Ball. Well, actually... Okay, wait. That's actually the best way to get that. Alright, I'm gonna wait for him to unfreeze, because then we can just, like, slot into the hole. No, we can't. <laughs> Mini bombs. Damn it. Curse you, Metroid 1. Not giving us bombs. Alright, I think we can go this way, though. Hopefully. Unless it's the same room repeated, which is always a possibility with Metroid 1, so... Okay, so, Norfair, what it likes to do is reuse the same exact item room multiple times in a row. So, missile... I think there's three here in a row. So hopefully we get lucky on the third draw. There we go, we did. It also means that rooms that have secret bomb tunnels are re are copy and pasted to other rooms that have the same tunnels, like this, but they're not useful because that's not how that works on that direction. So I don't really get how Metroid 1 designer... Like, I get the they were working with limitations. This was the older days of the NES before they knew the full capabilities of the system. The Metroid 1 is so primitive, compared like compared to Metroid 2. Metroid 2 reuses a lot of rooms, but they knew how to use the Game Boy. And therefore, Metroid 2 is a lot better with having more unique rooms and not just copy and pasting as much. They still do that, but like, they still copy and paste a bunch, but like, it's not nearly as egregious as Metroid 1 loves to do. It's more, it's to a more reasonable degree, I'll say. And the rooms feel more concise when they're built, and the, uh, and the secrets are... Actually, no, the secrets of Metro 2 are still kind of hid like absolute garbage, but, like, it's fine. It's fine. All right, we're going to get missiles, right? Yeah. Again, most of the stuff we're going to get is missiles. There's only so many upgrades we can really get in Metroid 1. Like, I think there, honestly, is supposed to, like, actually, no, wait. This, this room is the one that actually has the secret behind it. Because there's another one that, like, the other Norfair statue is just copy and pasted. And it has the secret thing behind it, but not actually anything leading it. So it's literally just an empty tunnel that leads to literally nothing, which is really funny to me. It's like, thank you, Metroid 1, for doing that, I guess. For being questionably designed, Metroid 1. You accomplished that, I guess. Being very weirdly designed. It's like the person had one brain cell who was making it. Oh, see, I love these tunnels. They're so good. Yeah, see, that's why that one room had this. Also, we get our first energy tank, which is actually good, but we're going very low on energy. So I guess that's always something. Plus, there's that one upgrade we totally missed in, uh... There's a lot of things we can get. Yeah, not 100% run, but... No, I missed a tank. Okay. You love to see it. Alright, shortcuts... I don't know which block it was. It's one of these. Alright. Like, there's no interesting, like, morph ball puzzle, like, bomb puzzles. It's literally just bomb walls. Like, when people joke about Metroid, just, oh yeah, you just bomb walls. Like, that's Metroid 1. Which, fair enough, they got the first game right. I can't blame them for that. They did completely accurately describe how the first game functions. It is literally just, yes, you bomb walls. 
and see what sticks. And it's not like the, the solution even changes. Like, look, it is the same thing. It's like the room layouts are quite literally just copy and pasted. Uh, and they don't even try to hide it. It's just blatantly obvious. Like, yeah, no, we, we copy and pasted. We don't, we don't have any shame. Nintendo and like back then. All right, hopefully we get another major upgrade. Like, high jump is kind of like the last major upgrade we need to actually progress in the game. Cause you already have ice beams. Like, I mean, all right, missiles. I guess. Okay. But like, yeah, look at this. Yeah, there's still a secret here. I don't even remember. Actually, there is a secret tunnel in this one, but there is one chosen statue that just straight up is not a secret behind it, and that for some reason there is this tunnel still. And is the funniest shit to me. Okay, now we have actually one of the few examples of a room actually using the upgrade that you get here. This case being the Ice Beam. It actually uses it, which is surprising. Given Metroid 1's standards of never using the upgrade that you actually got in the room for. These are hard jump. They're really hard platforming. Alright. Venture deeper in. I would like Varya suit though. That would be helpful. Also, I love how you have to do this. This is kind of the intended way to do it. Yes, the intended way to do it is like weirdly annoying. Uh. Gotta love Metroid 1. <laughs> It's amazing map design. It definitely got better as the games went on, that's all I'm gonna say. Because Metroid 1's map design is questionable to say the least. Like, I'm sorry, but Unaram is a little bit more fun. Okay, another energy tank. Okay, now I can finally show off this example I've been joking about this entire time. So look, you still have the secret tunnel, but it doesn't lead anywhere because they just copy and pasted it. This is the funniest thing to me. You have at least gotten rid of that, so like it's not blatantly obvious you just copy and paste everything, but I don't know, man. I get the metric, like, you know, the NES was limited, but come on, man. Even Zelda did a better job, and it came out the same year. Hell, Mario 1 did a better job. It did reuse some things in Metroid 1, but I don't know, man. Well, not Metroid 1, Mario 1. Might be a Metroid 1. Metroid Mario, the same thing, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, North Fair is where you get most of your upgrades, if you can tell already. Like, there's a lot of things here. Eh. Okay, Mr. Dude. You're just gonna you're just gonna chill right there? Okay, okay. Yeah, this is fake lava, by the way. Only us Metroid pros know this. Like, I've played Metroid 1 a lot. Like, I am not I know what Metroid 1's all about. I've played it multiple times. Like, it's not my first rodeo through it. Actually, I have never actually beaten the original version of Metroid 1. I have only beaten this one, because this one's actually fun. <laughs> and I will admit, this is the one... This is actually a good room that showcases the wave beam. We don't have the wave beam, but it is a good room that actually showcases the upgrade you get in there. Which is something that Metroid 1 very rarely does. Actually showing you how to use... Like, it sometimes does it. It's just, like, kind of up in the air if it'll do it or not. Look, most of these rooms have bumble blocks, but it doesn't actually mean they have anything in them. It just means they forgot to take it out. But a lot of them do. But it just kind of means that every secret is the exact same. It means the secrets aren't really well hidden. They're more just, oh yeah, well, it's just the same room recopied. Eh. You know, I'm complaining a lot, but honestly, like, Planets makes it so you can actually play the game, and it's more fun, and I'm, honestly, I, I do enjoy this more than, uh, Zero Mission, ironically enough. So, do with that what you will. Oh, hey, another energy tank. I'll always take that. Yeah, a lot of energy tanks. Other Brain's not gonna stand a chance. Oh, I'm actually surprised I got rid of that one. Like, yeah, Norfair is really just a bunch of repeating tunnels that have the same upgrades. Like, Metroid 1's map is not big in the slightest. It is the smallest 2D Metroid map in the entire series, because Metroid 2 fucking dwarfs this game in terms of map size. Metroid 2 is so much bigger than Metroid 1, which I feel like a lot of people don't realize. It's like, oh yeah, it's the Game Boy one. Why would I have a bigger map? But it just kind of does. Because Metroid 2 is just a better game in general. It is so much of a better game. 
And I feel like people don't give it the respect it deserves. Because it's just on Game Boy. It's like, it's so much better, though. Okay, we keep missing it perfectly. But yeah, Metroid 2 is so much better than Metroid 1. Like, it's not even a contest. It's just so much better. But thankfully, we're not playing Metroid 1. We're playing Metroid Plants. So Metroid Plants is amazing. Except this. You gotta love Metroid 1 map design. So, uh, welcome to a soft lock. We can literally not get out of here. Alright, well, we'll have to backtrack over here, I guess, later. But yeah, that is a soft lock. That is, you cannot leave that. You are dead. Thank you, Metroid 1. I mean, it's not a soft lock if you have the, the high jump, but we don't, so soft lock. Thank you, Metroid 1, for that. And let's head back over here, get some more upgrades. Uh, I guess we'll head back over the Brin Star to get some more upgrades. We can do Kraid whenever we want, so. Like, none of the puzzles are clever, it's just, okay, yeah, the same bombing wall thing. Like, it is Metroid, technically, but it doesn't have any of the charm that makes the series great, you know? It's just Metroid 1. And there's not much else to say about it. It is indeed Metroid. Just not a very good example of it. <laughs> Man, we're getting all the energy tanks, apparently. I mean, there's no raw, there's no reason we can't go to Kraid first, because that, that path we soft locked in is actually how you get the Kraid. So we might as well go back down there and get and get I mean not Kraid Ridley. Might as well get Ridley done and over with. We know that Varia suit, but we don't really need it, because again, screw attack kinda makes it so we're way more overpowered than we would be otherwise. And you know, we have a lot of energy tanks, so it's not like we're weak. But yeah, Metroid 1, if you wanted to head back, like you know, you had to backtrack all the way back over there. That's annoying. And also, if we die, we would have to grind all our energy back up. That's what makes Metroid 1 hard. It's not because it's actually hard. It's just because, oh, they just screw you over with the energy. So you better find an energy tank you haven't collected yet, or, uh, yeah, hope you like grinding. Listen, I have a lot of problems with Metroid 1. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it's not good. I didn't go all the way over here, either. Why'd we not do that? It's actually a lot to know our fair. It's just that most of it's repeating, like... The reason Metroid 1 is big is because it's just a bunch of repeated rooms. And while, yeah, Sam and like, well, Return of Samus does that too. It does have a lot of repeated rooms. They have more unique ones. They don't, they have less repeated rooms is the difference. And besides, the repeat, the unique rooms are way better. And there's a lot more interesting, like, set pieces and stuff in Metroid 1. I mean, Metroid 2. That Metroid 1 just straight up lacks. There's very few set pieces in Metroid 1. And even the set pieces it does have, it's just reused from other areas. So I hope you like seeing the same damn like tunnels over and over and over again, because that's Metroid 1. Not to mention the backtrack in this game is kind of terrible. Like, they couldn't even get that right. God damn it. Alright, well we can try bomb jumping, which I'm not... I'm kind of rusty on, so don't make fun of me when I'm taking eight years to do this. Okay. I remember the full timing for it. It's like... It's weird how the timing is. Okay, that didn't take that long. We don't need the ice beam. Who needs it? Alright, need a couple more missiles. And just leave the little weird hole in the corner there, because it really hates... It's like, it's so annoying to batch that, because I gotta go all the way back, because you'd think they would have a shortcut or something, but nope. <laughs> this is Metroid 1. What do you expect? Charity? This game doesn't know what that means. There ain't no charity, you better backtrack. People complain about Prime's backtracking. Meanwhile, Metroid 1, how about you backtrack to the same tunnels so that you can go into a different set of tunnels that look the exact same as the one you just backtracked through. So it just feels like you're going in circles, because, like, I don't blame people getting lost in this game, because, like, nothing looks unique. <laughs> Even if Super Metroid didn't have a map, I feel like it'd still be way easier to navigate just because everything looks actually different. Instead of Metroid 1, was just like, how about we just reuse everything? 
It's like, yes, Metroid 2, once again, is very confusing, but it's more just because of the screen size. And even then, like, I'd still argue that, like, it's e it's easier to figure out where the hell you are, because there's more unique shit. Whereas Metroid 1, it's just, yeah, no, let's just reuse literally every single loom layout, because why the hell not? You know, maybe this is becoming very negative for Metroid 1, but at the same point, I don't really care. Because, God, this game is not, it's not good. And I'm tired of pretending it is. I think most people can agree, even Metro fans like, can agree, like, yeah, Metroid 1 was a very rough starting point. Let's clearly see that the series got better from this, and thank God for it, because, God, Metroid 1 is just... And I'm playing a good version of Metroid 1, keep in mind, this is, this is way better than Metroid 1 actually is. Because actual Metroid 1 sucks. Because the controls are nowhere near as tight and precise as Planets does it. Planets actually has good controls. You know, this is my redemption for not being able to complain during Zero Mission. It's just, I'm complaining the entire thing. To be fair, I'm just complaining about a game that I think most people couldn't get behind. And, like, it kind of just... I'm just kind of comparing this to Planets. Because Planets does so much of a better job. And all it does is, like, just make it control well. Okay, there's Kraid. Uh, not Kraid. I keep saying Kraid. It's literally Ridley's area. But, yeah, we'll take out Ridley. Get the 70 missiles so that missiles are not even an issue. And... Because I don't know how to do the quick kill with Kraid, like, the skip Kraid. So we're just going to do both bosses. I don't really mind. Okay, Ridley, I admittedly do not remember how his layout works. Remember, any secret in this game is boiled down to bomb a random wall. Also, why did my computer just decide to randomly switch tabs for no reason? <laughs> like, I just straight up did that. Just switched to my file manager. I don't really... I don't know what that was all about. Guess I'm not a big fan of it, though. But the upgrades are so weirdly paced out. Like, Norfair has most of the upgrades in the game. Straight up. Norfair and Kraid don't have anything. At least, as far as I'm concerned. There's just so many pointless rooms in this game. I do like the non-linearity of it. This is probably the most... Like I said before, this is like the most non-linear Metroid. So it does have that going for it. Which is admittable, like, which is admirable, but... My Switch was done better, this is also what I'm kind of going with. I just wish it did its non-linearity better, not as boring as it does it. Yeah, taking out Ridley makes sense first, just because he's actually easier. Like, there are some set-piece rooms, like the, the fake-out energy tank. I do like that room. It's iconic, so much that it's actually appeared in pretty much every other Metro game after it. And same with the starting room, that's also iconic. But, like, aside from, like, the first few rooms, most of the map is very boring. Oh, we already found him. Well, that was easy. Yeah, really, is really not hard. Like, he's really just easy. Kraid's the actual issue when it comes to the mini-bosses. Alright, time to get a secret, I guess. It's like, yeah, that's why I'm not worried about fighting Kraid, because, like, he's easy as fuck. What the God? Am I ever going to say his name right? I don't know why I keep saying Ridley is Kraid. It's really not that hard. Oh, this is where Longbeam was. Okay. Just in the most awkward corner of the entire map. Sure. Thank you, game. And we're soft. Oh, thank you. We can get out of this one, at least. Or maybe not, because we're doing bomb jumps worse than we were earlier. And it's a easier... Get. It's funny, because it's actually easier to do than the other one was. Okay, well... <laughs> I love the softlocks game. Metroid 1 was playtested, clearly. Like, there's a lot of respectable things Metroid 1 did, and it's still kind of fun playing it with better controls. Because the better controls and the not-stupid energy system they have definitely makes the Metroid Planets 1 at least fun to experience. Like, it's not great or anything. It's very average, but, like... It's still fun to try it out. In fact, the reason I did Kraid really early is because I have Screw Attack, and that kind of makes the game way easier. Like, that makes it so much easier to play this game. <laughs> you can just jump and kill all the enemies. It's easy. It's fun. That's why I like screw... That's, like, that's why I don't really like screw attacks. It's such a good upgrade. Alright, I'm gonna get a few more upgrades in here, I guess. Because there's definitely a lot of stuff we missed here. We kind of just found the right route right off the bat, which I'm surprised. 
There's a lot of ways to go if you couldn't tell. I don't really get the point of this shortcut. Like, it's kind of a shortcut, but it's also kind of just not. But yeah, without screw attack, the rooms are just- the enemy spam is- it's literally just enemy spam. Like, look at this garbage. Like, this isn't even, like, remotely possible without, like... I guess Wave Beam would kind of make it more possible. Without screw attack, like, yeah, fuck you, you're dead. What? Okay, fake platform. Thank you, game. Thank you, Metroid 1. Oh my god. Okay, I, game, I get it. I, I understand. Like, <laughs> it feels like a little Timmy level is the thing. And it leads into to do this game. And, uh, and the best part is it leads into a fucking dead end. That's like, ah, uh, Metroid 1. You gotta love Metroid 1. It makes The level design makes so much sense. There's so much logic behind it. I didn't realize the room is... Okay, well... Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, the famous room. Well, not this room, specifically. I love how they had to repeat it like... It, no, the famous room is just a copy of another room. It just it happens to have an upgrade this time. Problem is the famous room is annoying. I've always messed up the famous room in all three games of the Piers and I always manage to fuck up the jump somehow. And I don't really know how. It's really not even that hard, is the funniest part. Okay, I don't get how the fuck that hitbox works, but sure. Sure, game. You can tell me that's how that works. I'm not gonna believe you, but. Also, you gotta love the intentional. The intentional bomb jump stuff. So I hope you get ready for this, because this is going to take a while. Never mind. I'm too skilled is the issue. Ah, oh, it's just a missile, so if I miss this. Okay, I actually make the jump. I remember even what's over here after that. That's like the main reward for doing that. So what's your reward if you decide to go further? Uh... Oh my god, this is so long. I really do not remember what the fuck is even over here. And I want the pitfall rooms. I don't think there's anything over here. I think it's literally just a bunch of dead ends. Like, there's just so much empty... Sp like, why do these rooms even need to exist? There's nothing here. Like, empty rooms aren't a bad thing, but, like... When it's the only thing in the area, it becomes a little worse. Yeah, I don't really feel like explaining the rest of this. Because I don't think there is any other major upgrades here, so I don't really see the point. Nor do I see the point of dealing with Norfair anymore, because I don't really want to keep exploring Norfair. Uh, so we're gonna do a big old, we're gonna do a big old reset. Also, we can't. We have the the resets work basically based on the starting platform. So if we did a reset here, I don't think it would take us back to North, to where we want to go. I'm gonna double check. I don't know if that's actually how that works. Cause I'm not sure one's fucking weird. So let's see. Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> Bam. Speed tech. And to be fair, even though we're not doing like a hundred percent run, we're doing a pretty good job. Fifty-eight percent. We're only thirty minutes in. Honestly, I think with Varia suit we could totally take on uh, a Moother brain. Uh, no, I'm still a little bit worried though. I kind of wish we had uh, a Varia suit. That's like the only thing I'm a little bit iffy on right now. And we have plenty of energy tanks and stuff, but still would prefer. This wave beam is kind of useless to us. I mean, it's really overpowered as a weapon, but we can't stack them in this, so it's not particularly useful. 
Prey does have some upgrades for us, though, so I guess we could always go over there. I guess I'll go all the way up there, though, because we can just go that way. Dude, I hate how Britain Star's design. It's literally just a giant H with some giant tunnels going off. It's so annoying to travel through because there's so much backtracking. Because Metroid 1 does not know the concept of making good map design. Because, like, there's no shortcuts anywhere. It is just you go a really long way to get anything in the game. That's why I don't like this game. Because it does that all the time. It's just like, ugh. No, the secrets are hidden well. It's just like, it's Metroid, but with... Out any of the pizzazz that makes Metroid good. I mean, yes, it is the first game in the series, so you can't fault it for that much, but... Still not good. <laughs> I'm still not gonna make it say it's good, because it just isn't. Let's not, let's not kid ourselves here. We all know this game is not fucking good. Okay, that was a weird bomb jump. Alright, well, yeah, we'll get this upgrade early, I guess. It's gonna be like a missile, so we're gonna waste all our time doing this bomb jump chain. Oh, come on, I literally had the timing perfect on that. Perfect. Didn't even take that long. It's gonna be like one missile, it's the worst part. It's only problem with the randomizers, it makes some things totally useless. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really mad because I kind of already knew that was gonna be the thing it was gonna give me, but. Alright, well, we'll head back. I guess we continue down the hallway, although I don't believe there's actually anything of interest down the hallway, but... Eh, it's worth a shot, I guess. Because we're missing some valuable upgrades right now. Like, I do like how many sequence breaks Metro 1 does feature, because it is a lot. Admittedly, it is a lot. Like, I don't like this. This is, this is stupid. This is the intended way to get down, by the way. There is no other way down, as far as I'm concerned. Because Wave Beam can only do so much. So, thank you for intentional game design, Metroid 1. You, d you did it, except you didn't. You failed at doing it. In pretty much every face, you fucked it up. What? Why? Like, why, though? Why was that how that was designed? I get that we don't have, uh, we have a long beam. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're gonna do that again? Or are we just gonna make it simple? Okay. Map design. Truly Metroid 1's strong suit. And then we drop down. That's basically all of Brinstar. Because the other way is how Torian works. So we're just going to do a big old reset. Because that's the quickest way to get around. Okay. Um, and we're 40 minutes in. We're doing a pretty good job in terms of time. I mean, obviously this isn't a speed run, but... I'm actually going to head over here first. See what the... Do we get that first? I forget where it is. Mm. Ah, it's just a mess. I don't feel like getting it. And I was gonna like bomb jump up to it if it was something good, but it's not something good. It's something useless. So, all right, I haven't really gotten any substantial upgrades lately. Mostly just missiles. 
would love to get Varya suit. I would love that. I don't think I'm going to get that, though, is the problem here. I'll take an energy tank. Yeah. I think the best part about Metroid 1 is this one song. This is easily the best thing Metroid 1 did. This song kicks so much ass. But yeah, Crazy Lair kind of sucks in terms of actual... Yeah, no, big surprise. Metroid 1 has questionably designed areas. This one's just a bunch of mazes with, like, the same rooms repeated, but it also has the enemy spam problem that, uh, Ridley had. So I hope you're ready to see this room, like, 80 times. Like, yeah, there's nothing over there. It's just the same room. It is quite literally just the same room. There's not even upgrades or anything. It's just the same thing. But again... Like, these rooms are entirely worthless. They have no use being existing. It is just the same room. Quite literally the exact same room. Like, I'll, even, I'll prove it. You want to know what the room above it's going to be? It's going to be the same thing. Because that's how Metroid 1 likes to work for some reason. Like, did you... Re okay, I get that you're, the developers were limited what they could actually put in the game, but, like, they could have at least, you know, put less rooms? Because all they really did was bloat the length of the game without actually adding anything meaningful to that length. It just is lengthy for the sake of it. It's like, there's nothing interesting here. Ah, shit. Ah, come on. Come on. Screw attack. I think I got the screw attack early, because otherwise this would be a lot more annoying. Screw attack kind of makes it so much more bearable. Makes it a lot easier. It's like easy mode, honestly. <laughs> Just having screw attack this early. Hey, bring the randomizer for that. It's like, and even the iconic rooms in the map, it's just like, well, they reuse them so they feel less iconic because it's just like, oh, it's just one of those rooms that looked like that originally, I guess. I will give Zero Mission that. They definitely did... Like, Zero Mission did a good... Like, is a good game. It's significantly better than Metroid 1. It's just that I think this is... I just like planets better. Oh, we found an... Un found a secret by accident. So there's that. Okay, well... We'll not hit every single enemy on the way down. I guess that is potentially a decent area for this, the... Ice Beam. Not for really well-designed reasons, but it is objectively good, I guess. You do need the ice beam for it, so... Oh, hey, high jump, finally. I preferred Varia Soup, but I guess high jump isn't exactly a bad thing to get either. I think that means the major... Okay, we've missed Wave Beam and Varia Soup, so hopefully we'll get those uh, down here. There's no upgrades in Torian, which, fair enough. Yeah, bomb bomb jump is also apparently an intentional thing to do, so. I guess I'll loop back. So I don't remember what the fuck is over here. Oh yeah, it's just a one way, so you can do the bomb trick to like get over, but there's a lot of one way tunnels. Yeah, Metroid one. Alright, well, this is the same upgrade room we've seen like eight times. Nah, nah, it's just the same tunnel we've seen eight times. Slightly different. They both look the exact same, minus the upgrade at the end. At least we got an iconic. Like, seriously, it's just this room. This room. You see, how many fucking times have we seen this room? I'll take the upgrade in it, but like, god damn, we've seen this room so many times. It's just the same room, but, like, they added an upgrade at the end, which, okay, cool, but... Even that feels repeated, in a way. Thrilling. Can't wait to climb back that. <laughs> the backtracking game. I 
All right, well, hey, at least there's a cool kind of room. So we have that, I guess. That's something. Uh, I still kind of want Varya suit because, like, ah, uh, Mother Brain is hard. Wait, there's an upgrade in here. I forgot. I think it is right here. Oh, there's Varya suit. It's in like the most weird place possible. Okay then, that is not is not where I expected that to be, but hey. All right, well, I no longer care about getting the other upgrades because we're we're about done with this. All right. Let's go kill Mother Brain. We have like near max missiles. We actually got most of the upgrades. We just missed Wave Beam, which doesn't matter because Wave Beam is actually useless. Thankfully, in planets, you can just switch the beams on the fly so that you can actually use Wave Beam to kill enemies. Because otherwise, in Metro 1, if you want to switch beams, fuck you. Go find where you go back to where you found the beam. Which also means there's multiple places to acquire the uh, Wave Beam and Ice Beam. I think there's actually, I think there's only one area to acqu acquire the Wave Beam. But there's two areas to get the Ice Beam. Metroid 2 does that as well. I think it's a dumb design choice. I just want to keep the upgrade I get, you know? Is that is that too much to ask for? Because something tells me it isn't. Also, fun fact about this upgrade, a lot of people just think you need the uh, the high jump to get it. No, you need, you need like a Ripper and stuff. Well, not Ripper. You need like a Scree to do it. Fun. Or bomb jumps, I guess. That is always a possibility. But I don't feel like doing it for five missiles that I'm not going to need for Mother Brain. Alright, can we get under 50 minutes? I mean, the video's not going to be under 50 minutes, but can we get under 50 minutes for the in-game timer? Anyway, Torian is pretty unremarkable because you don't need to fight any of the Metroids. They're all optional. There is no reason to even bother with them. God, I hate these tunnel rooms. They're so freaking long for no reason. And it's just the same platforms in the same set, repeated. The Metroid 1 when it doesn't just reuse literally everything of its design. God. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, I'm having a good time. Don't get me wrong. I'm having a fun time. I'm just pointing out literally everything wrong with Metroid 1. Because I'm having a good time, mainly because this is Metroid Planets, and I'm still enjoying myself. Because playing a Metroid 1 randomizer is still fun to an extent. Also, if you, if you go down there before... If you have the Morph Ball, you can go down there and get Softlock too, so that's always good. Like, I'm still having fun. Metroid 1, if I was playing OG Metroid 1, I would not be having any fun, and this would turn into a much longer game. Because of how much poorly that... That one just controls more poorly. The energy system of how to get stuff is so much worse designed. It's just so much worse designed in every way. Nah, I'll kill some of the Metroids, though. Yeah, fun fact, the uh, screw tech was not, is not a mandatory upgrade. Not even a little bit. It just makes the game a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> it's like the main thing of the screw attack. You find it early, good for you, because like, it's always useful. Yeah, because there's no doors in Metroid One where you have to kill all the enemies, so you can just let the Metroids live if you want. And since it's Metroid One, it's kind of hard to hit them anyway, so it's kind of encouraged to not kill them. You're stuck behind these barriers anyway, so it's like I'm not gonna get you. If you run by them once, they ain't gonna ever get you. The only reason I'm killing some of them is just so I can get some of the... They do drop... They have very high pickups. That's the main reason to kill them. Okay, can my D-pad not be... Lousy for two seconds? Okay, there we go. Okay, Torian isn't really anything to write home about. It's kind of simple. Okay, I prefer energy, because that's, that's why I'm killing them now. Okay, well... The Metroids are incredibly generous with the pickups. That's like... I like the main reason you want to kill them, because they're so easy to kill.
All right, well, we got max, yeah, max missiles. We're doing pretty good. We can go back to skipping all the Metroids. Besides, I think we're actually already at the end, yeah. I gotta figure how annoying this fight is. Like, look how stupid this is. Like, how the fuck are you supposed to dodge any of this? Like, in a concise and easy way. Like, straight up. Like, you don't lose a tank of energy before doing this. Like, I don't know what you're doing. Because you can freeze these things, but, like, freezing the rink is annoying, and I don't like doing it, so... Ah, uh, we can just damage boost all this, which is the funny part. Because the way we are, we're not getting knocked back, so we can just literally do this. And Mother Brain does not have much health at all, so... Alright, well, and the escape sequence is even easier. You have three minutes to do it for some reason, which I don't understand, because all it is is this really short tunnel. That's all the escape sequence is. At least Zero Mission added onto it. And it's not like it's even cleverly made, too. It's literally just the same repeating platforms. Like, why is half the room not used? Alright, we're hitting that in a weird angle, though. It is easy, it is easy to fall, though, but, like, you're not gonna die. And it, again, in the original match weight, it's harder because the controls aren't as good, but... Like, I'm not even doing a good escape sequence. Like, I've messed up a ton. Like, you'd think they'd make it longer, but no. I could, you could do them like 30 seconds if you wanted to. Like, it didn't even take me that long. Great, you fulfilled your mission. It will revive peace in space, but it may be invaded by the other Metroid. What the fuck does that mean? Pray for a true peace in space. Like, what the fuck does an other Metroid mean? Like, what? What's the other Metroid? We don't... Hey, we got the, we got the good ending, so we did that. Like, what does the other Metroid mean? How, how do we get invaded by the other Metroid? I'm curious. Anyway, I wish there was a password. Oh, we get the Prime music, so it's all worth it. There we go, we did it. We beat Metroid 1. We can check our route, I guess. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this pathing. It's insane. Incredible pathing. You could have done even quicker if I didn't just backtrack into some rooms I knew had nothing. Like, Torian is literally just a straight line. Like, Metroid 1's map design is not interesting. But there we go, we have beaten Metroid 1 again. Uh, we have a beaten Nig uh, not Nig Zebeth Randomized. So hope you guys enjoyed that video. I plan to do more Metroid Planet stuff, and mostly Enigma. I might do a randomized Novus, though. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.